Hello everyone, it is Tuesday of week three of Advent, and if you are lighting candles, of course you will continue to light the third candle. Okay, so this week we are focused in on peace, and today we're going to focus in on some of the words that Jesus actually said to his disciples regarding peace, but a little bit of background before we jump right into scripture. So where we're going to be is um, a time period where Jesus is talking with his disciples. So he's actually telling them quite a few things, but we're coming toward the end of this discussion and Jesus is preparing them for what is to come, namely the crucifixion and then of course the subsequent resurrection. And then um, they don't really fully understand what he's saying <laughs> and they ask some questions that kind of show us that they're a little confused as to how this kind of all goes down. Um, but Jesus is telling them not so much so that they will understand in the moment, but that when these events come about, when these things start to happen, that they can remember what he said. And more importantly, later on, when some of these things come about, that they will remember what he said and it will make sense to them at that time. And so we're going to jump right in now. We're in John 14, verses 15 through 27. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you yet a little while and the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live. You also will live in that day. You will know that I am in my father and you in me and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Okay, so there's a lot in there, but we're gonna focus in on peace. Now, as I said before, Jesus is talking to his disciples. Now he is here imparting to them that they will have the Holy Spirit. And when we talk about the Holy Spirit, he tells us several things about this being that is going to be with them. Um, they don't totally get it, <laughs> but Jesus wants them to have comfort when the times get difficult and when the Holy Spirit does come that they understand what is going on. So this is a lot like how we prepare our children for some things in the world. They're just not going to get it until they experience it. But we tell them as much as we can in advance so that hopefully when it happens, they get it and they make the right decisions, right? And Jesus is doing something similar here where they don't totally get it. Um, but he knows that uh, when these things start to happen, they're going to they're gonna get it. And he wants them to have peace and not be uh, confused and upset. And so the first thing he tells them is, how do you get the Holy Spirit, <laughs> right? And what is this Holy Spirit? So to get the Holy Spirit is the gospel. It's what we've been talking about, right? Believing in Jesus, following his commands. That's how you receive the Holy Spirit. This is not a works-based thing. Like you're not going to do enough good deeds to get the Holy Spirit. Jesus literally says, I will ask the Father and the Father will send him. Literally. Now, how does Jesus know to ask the Father? 
Well, you believe in him and you love him, right? He says, he who loves me and obeys my commands, that is the person. And so it's not saying you have to be a perfect person. It's saying you have to believe in him and follow him. And so that is what we're talking about here. And when you do that, when you become a believer, Jesus asks the Father and the Father sends the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit lives in you. Of course, this whole concept is very, very foreign to the disciples. <laughs> and that's okay. They haven't had this yet, right? We know about this because we are post uh, resurrection, post Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came um, on a, a lot of believers. So we have a lot more understanding of, of this than they obviously did. So um, Jesus will ask the Father to send the helper. Now he calls him the helper. He gives us several clues as to who the Holy Spirit is and what the Holy Spirit does. Now he does and is a lot more than what's right here, but for today he's the helper and he's known as the spirit of truth. Okay. And this is important because we can know that the Holy Spirit and Jesus and the Father, one God, right? Not three gods, one God. And so if the Holy Spirit is telling us something, we can know that it is truth. Now, um, he also continues to tell them that the world can't receive the spirit of truth. And that's important. Why is that important? Only believers get the spirit of truth. But the disciples will know because the Spirit will be inside of them. Okay, so they're going to know the truth. They're going to know what is real, right? Because the Spirit will, will let them know. They will have the Spirit. He tells them, you are going to have the Spirit. So Jesus goes on to tell them that they're not going to be orphans. They will leave. He will leave. He's going to leave them. And then he's going to come back. And anyone who loves him will be loved by the Father, and he will manifest himself to these people. And so the disciples are very kind of confused, and Judas asks a question. And it's important, <laughs> John made sure we understood that um, this John is not, I'm sorry, this uh, Judas is not the one who betrays him. Okay, there's, there's two Judases. And this is not the one that betrays him. And this Judas um, asks him, you know, what are you talking about? How, why would, how are you going to manifest to us? In other words, how are we going to see you and the world's not going to see you? And aren't we saving more than just us? And I don't get it. <laughs> and so, um, but that's okay. The important thing at this point that Jesus is wanting them to know is that he is not going to leave them as orphans. Now, if you think about what's about to happen to Jesus, right? He's about to be crucified and he's going to leave. And they don't really quite get that, but he does. And he wants them to know you are not orphans, right? And also when he leaves again and the um, ascension, so he resurrects and then he comes back and spends 40 days with uh, people on earth, namely the disciples. And then he goes to heaven and that's when he says, I'm going to prepare a place for you, right? And so at that time, he is still not leaving them as orphans, right? And that's when the Holy Spirit will come and he will be with them through the Holy Spirit. And so um, they're not getting this, but he's wanting to make sure that they hear this from him so that they can remember it when the time is needed. Now, <clears throat> Jesus wants them to remember these words, okay? And he tells them, don't worry. I'm going to send the helper, this Holy Spirit. And he's going to teach you and he's going to bring all of the things that I've said to your memory, okay? Now, that applies to us too, okay? So just like he promised this for the disciples, that's the same for us. The Holy Spirit helps us remember what we're supposed to remember in regards to what the Bible says, right? Now, to remember it means that you have to have read it. <laughs> so there is that element, okay? Um, now, of course, the disciples didn't have to read it because they heard it from Jesus himself. And so the Holy Spirit would bring to their memory the things that Jesus had told them, specifically the things that he just got done telling them to include that he's not going to leave them as orphans and that the Holy Spirit is going to come and teach them. Now, teaching 
also implies that these there are some things that um, are going to not be based on memory, right? And so, you know, a lot of times you may kind of know, ah, I shouldn't be doing whatever it is. And, um, and it's not that a Bible verse comes to your memory. Um, the Holy Spirit is telling you, you know, that's not, that's not somewhere you need to be or that's not something you need to do, right? And we see that through the rest of the New Testament, how the Holy Spirit guides the disciples. Um, but that's for a different day. <laughs> so the Holy Spirit gives the peace that Jesus leaves for the disciples, okay? He says, um, if we go back to the verses, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, right? Um, and by the way, this isn't like the world, right? Um, I, I do things different than the world. And don't let your hearts be troubled and don't let them be afraid, okay? So the Holy Spirit gives this peace to us just like he would for the disciples. And this peace, it transcends understanding and it guards our hearts and minds. And what do I mean when I say that it, it transcends all understanding? It just doesn't quite make sense logically, <laughs> okay? Um, you know, if you um, ever hear a missionary speak, a lot of times uh, they'll have a story of just utter chaos or maybe violence or all these things are happening, but yet they talk about a peace that they had within. And that's what we're talking about. It's, um, it's this peace that doesn't make logic sense, but to a Christian, we know it's the peace of God, right? And so the disciples don't quite understand this right now. They come to understand it later after the Holy Spirit comes. And when he comes to, to the believers, but if we choose to love Jesus and follow him, we get this Holy Spirit and we get this peace that he imparts. And so this allows our hearts to remain unafraid and untroubled, right? He says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't be afraid, right? We can have this peace. This is how martyrs can march to their death, knowing that they're going to go to heaven. And even though it's a scary thing, they have peace within. And, um, and that's the peace that we can have. So when things are chaotic, when things are frightening, we can be at peace knowing that we are in the hand of God. That is a very hard thing to explain, but those who have experienced it can just pinpoint it. They know it exactly. Um, and so um, this peace, though, <laughs> we're not given this peace to just sit back and be like, okay, you know, this is great. I don't have to do anything. I'm at peace. The world's amok, but I'm okay. That's not <laughs> what we're supposed to do. We are called to use the peace that God has given us to further God's kingdom, just like everything else, right? He gives spiritual gifts. Those are to further his kingdom. He gives um, you passions as to further his kingdom. The job you have is to further his kingdom. Everything about your life is to further his kingdom and to bring him glory. And so that part of the puzzle we will discuss tomorrow. <laughs> so you'll have to wait. But the cliffhanger I'm leaving with you is the peace that the Holy Spirit gives us is what we use to further God's kingdom, okay? And so if you haven't made the decision to follow Jesus, let me just tell you, you can have this peace. If you believe that he died and rose again, that he died for your sins, and um, you believe in him, that he really rose from the grave, like bodily, it's not a metaphor, um, and you follow him, then he will send you the Holy Spirit and you can have this peace as well. Okay, so let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for bringing us together online to discuss the peace that you promised the disciples and that you promised us. Lord, and we just thank you so much for the Holy Spirit and the guidance that he gives and the comfort and peace that he gives. Lord, he's got uh, so many attributes, of course, um, but today we're looking at peace and we just want to thank you for that inner peace that you give us, that peace that we have when we know that we are at peace with you. And Lord, help us to remember that as we go throughout this week. And Lord, as the chaotic events of the world unfold, we just ask that, that you remind us of your love and of the peace that we have with you. In your name I pray. Amen.